Hello everyone, this is going to be a beginning tutorial, a uh, noob friendly beginning tutorial, uh, for an introduction to C++. Uh, we provide, and I provide, support on this form, it's pcanswersformer.former.com. So if you go here and register, we've got some, C we're going to have some C Sharp, C++, Python, I plan to add PHP, and some other support some other programming languages. If you go to C++, we have some basic tutorials up right now. This guide to C++, I wrote this. I wrote, highly recommend it. I've, it's got a lot of what you need to know for just beginning to write C++ programs. A lot of foundation, which I'll try to give you in these videos, but if you, if you don't want to find where it is in the video, it's just a really good reference. So go here, register the link is in the description if you register here we'll try to give you a lot of helpful comments and support you can make suggestions for future tutorials so now moving on the C++ compiler and IDE that we're going to be using is bloodshed dev C++ and the download link will also be in the description but here it is, www.bloodshev.net backslash dev backslash devcpp. So we want this one. Uh, might as well get the beta. I haven't found anything wrong with it, so I'm going to download it, save it, install it, just so you guys can see how to configure it and everything. I'm just going to do full installation. Just to get everything on here. Alright, beta. I just click through all this stuff. I mean, you can change settings if you really want to, but I just go with the defaults. waiting for it to configure and do first time setup. You only have to do this the first time. The rest of the time will open up pretty fast. So you just get, every time you open this you get a little hint. Sometimes I read them, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. Not really important. You can actually turn it off. Alright. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to File, New, Project. What we want to do for the first time is we want to create a console application and we're going to call it hello world okay we're going to select where we want to save it I'm going to throw it in my a folder I have my desktop I already created this project uh, so I'll just create a new one I recommend creating a folder for all of your projects because when you save it, it's going to save files. So if you just throw all your programs in one big folder, you're going to have a ton of files with a bunch of different names. It's going to be really confusing, and you'll get confused quickly. All right. So when you open it up, you start out with this default code. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of what this stuff is a little later. But this this stuff, you're probably going to have these three lines of code in every single program that you write in C++ forever. You'll probably end up adding a lot more like include time or something like that and include system uh, for more advanced applications. So this is something that's pretty much a core part of any C++ program is this include IO stream, include that and in using namespace std. Um, then we have the main function. Uh, we'll get into functions in the next video but for now, I like to change exit success. I don't really know what that does for you, but I like to say return zero. Um, just looks nicer and pretty much does the same thing. It's important to keep that there uh, 
because if you don't have that return zero statement, your program shouldn't work. So we've got this system pause, which we will just run the application, see what that does. So you're going to click compile and run, main CPP, save, it'll compile and run. And what this system pause is doing is it's just going to display this press any key to continue. And then when you press a key, it's going to hit return zero, the end of the program, it's going to close. Excuse me. So that system pause is very useful in later applications if you want to wait for user input, make sure they're still awake or something like that. I don't know. So we're going to, first thing we want to do is print hello world. So to do that, you're going to type C out, C O U T, and do these uh, less than, less than sign. You're going to do an opening quote, hello world, closing quote, semicolon. Then if you click compile and run. You should see that it says hello world, and then we have that press any key to continue. Just in case you're curious, if you take out this system pause, what is it going to do? Well, it's going to run, and it's going to print hello world, and then it's going to close really fast. So that's why system pause is always nice to have in there at the end of your programs just so you can see what's going on before it closes. Now if you noticed it says hello world press any key to continue. Ideally we want those to be on two, two separate lines. So if you do type backslash n what's going on? What, what the? What happened to my compile buttons? Uh, I'm confused. What is going on? Uh, well, this is interesting. This hasn't happened to me before. I intend just to go on and whoops, figure out what I did wrong to cause that. And like I said, this is a beta. So just kind of did some undo magic there. I'm just going to restart. Save it. Oh, it's still running. That was why. Alright. I guess that makes sense. Anyway, sorry about that. Now we get to learn how to open a project. Reopen. There we go. Double click on main CPP. So I pretty much undid everything important, everything that we did, but didn't do that much. So just type it again. Hello world, semicolon, backslash n. So if we compile and run, there we go. Hello world, press any key to continue. All right. So now that we have that, let's get some basic input here. So let's define a string variable. Actually, can we just define that? Uh, I think you, actually, you have to do an include for string. We'll, we'll cover all this. But let's just go char j. And pretty much what char is, it's a, it's a character type variable. We'll get into variable types in a later video. But for now, just know that char, it's a variable type. It's named j, and it can hold one character like a, b, c, d, e. So type sin. So then you do the same thing as C out, except you're going to do sin, and you're going to use greater than signs instead of less than signs. So that's going to put the value of j that's going to set the value of j to whatever the user input is. And then we're going to C out j. So essentially what this program should do is just say to, it should say hello world it should ask you for input and then it should print out that input. So let's try that. Hello world. I'm going to type R. As you can see, it printed R again, and then press any key to continue. So you can use that. You can pretty much see where this is going in the terms of how you get information from the user and store it into a variable. Uh,
that's going to be it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I plan to cover create pretty much creation of a calculator. We're going to introduce functions, examine exactly what is going on in here a little bit more, create a first functions, and create multiplication, division, subtraction functions, and then tie them all together to create an calculator application that runs in a command prompt. So I hope you come back and subscribe to my channel, and like I said, go to the forum, register. If you have any questions, post them there. Uh, thanks for watching.